welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel, the owner and creator here at the Eclectic Cottage in Spokane, Washington. Happy Friday. I hope you've had a great week so far. Mine is definitely looking up. My husband and I finally got to go home uh, a couple of nights ago uh, after being evacuated from our house on Saturday morning at 3.30 in the morning uh, due to the Oregon road fire in our area. Uh, luckily, our home is fine. Uh, there was never really any super immediate danger, uh, but our hearts and our prayers do go out to those who have been affected by all these wildfires. Anyway, for today's video, I have a thrift flip for you, and I managed to complete four projects for today's video. Now, as of yesterday, when I got here, I only had one of these projects done. Uh, it was a pretty exhausting week, but I rallied yesterday after a good night's sleep in my own bed, and I managed to get three more projects finished for today. Uh, so I'm hoping you like them, and I'm hoping you enjoy today's video. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to those projects. Project one is this plain glass pitcher that I had picked up a little while ago. And uh, since today's theme is kind of sunflower inspired, I decided to put this sunflower I had left over from the Sunflower Fields transfer set by Redesign on the front of it. Now I have to tell you that putting this large of a transfer onto a curved surface like this was definitely a bit of a challenge. And I did get a couple of wrinkles in the transfer, but all in all, it turned out pretty well and I'm happy with it. Once I got the transfer applied, I did go over it with one good coat of Big Top, being careful to just keep it on the transfer. And once I was finished with that, this project was done. And I really do like how it came out. So for project two, I have these two pillar holders in my stash and I've been hanging on to them because I really didn't know if I wanted to paint them or not, uh, but I decided they would make a great addition to the projects that I'm working on for today's video. So I went ahead and grabbed them. I decided I wanted to put a crackle finish on these guys. So I am going in with one good even coat of spray paint. That is the Rust-Oleum 2X in matte black. And to achieve the crackle finish and get some chippiness on these guys, I am going in with Sweet Pickens Milk Paint. And this color is new to me. It's I've never used it before. It's called Curry. And I was thinking since it's kind of a yellowy, orangey color with a little bit of brown in it, it would be perfect to go with all the sunflowers. So I ended up having to go over these guys three times with the milk paint to get complete coverage over that black, which I was fine with. Uh, and of course it started to crackle and chip after the second coat, uh, which was nice. And so uh, I did end up getting quite a bit of crackling and a little bit of chippiness, especially on the smaller of the two candle holders. If you've never used milk paint before, it is a great paint for painting not only smalls, uh, but furniture as well. In fact, I use it predominantly on most of my furniture pieces uh, just because I like the finish I get with milk paint. It is powdery paint, so it comes in a powder form and you add uh, water to it preferably warm water. And I like to use a little immersion blender to mix it because it tends to be a little chunky. And I, th in this case, since I wanted a chippy finish, I did not add extra bond, which is an additive that's kind of like glue and it makes things, makes the paint adhere better to whatever you're painting it on. So you can see here, like I said, I got quite a bit of chippiness. I decided to go over it with a paper towel rather than do the sanding with the sandpaper just because I didn't want to accidentally sand all the way through the black into the white. So I got a little bit of chippy on this bigger one and I went ahead and gave them each a good distressing with the sandpaper, just being careful again not to go too far into the white. Now, just like with a 
chalk-based or clay-based paint. Milk paint also needs to be sealed. And so for that, I am using Sweet Pickens Black Oil Wax. And you can see here, I'm just going in with a chip brush and putting one good even coat all over both pieces. Then you let that sit for about 15 minutes and then come back and wipe off the excess. I just use a shop towel. Now for me, the jury is still kind of out on this color. I'm not sure if it's my favorite and I don't know if black wax was the best idea. <laughs> so, but I'm curious, what do you guys think? Do you like the color? Do you think I should have gone with a different wax? Let me know. Staying with the sunflower theme, Project 3 is this really pretty print that I picked up recently at the Goodwill. And the reason you haven't seen this in a thrift haul is it was just an impromptu stop that my husband and I made on our way home from work one night. So I got this and one other item and that was it for that trip. Anyway, I liked the color of the frame, but sometimes I think with these lighter frames, the print gets a little bit lost. And so I decided I wanted to darken up the frame and I wanted to kind of match a color in the frame. So I picked the roof of the little galvanized birdhouse. And so the closest color I could think to come to that would be weathered wood by DIY, which is this really pretty dark kind of grayish brown. Now, once I got two good even coats of the paint on the piece, I wanted to add a little something extra. So what I decided to do was do a dry brushing technique using DIY's crinoline over the entire frame to give it more of a barn wood look. And so for that, I'm just dipping the paint or the chip brush just barely, barely into the paint, wiping most of it off and then lightly going over the entire piece. Then I ran around the edges just to kind of highlight both the inside and the outside edge uh, with the crinoline paint. Once that was done and the paint was completely dry, I had to seal it. And for that, I am simply using DIY's clear wax, just waxing that on with my soft brush and then wiping back any excess with that shop towel. Just going around and making sure to get all of the edges inside and out. And once that was done, it was time to remove the tape and then clean up the piece. I did have to go around it with um, a screwdriver just to get a little bit of paint that was in the crevices around the edge. And then wash it up with some Windex and then this piece is done. And I absolutely love how it turned out. My fourth and final project is this old wooden chair that I picked up not too long ago at a yard sale for $2. Now it was a little wobbly. So before I did this video, I did turn it upside down. I pulled two of the legs outside out of the bottom, added some wood glue and glued it back together again. Then once the chair was nice and sturdy, I gave it a bath with some crud cutter, wiped that off with a paper towel, and then misted it with some clean water and rinsed that crud cutter residue back off. Once that was done and it was completely dry, I went in with some 150 grit sandpaper and sanded the seat of it just because over time it looked like the uh, finish on the seat had started to kind of wear and it was very rough and I needed a nice, flat, even smooth surface for the paint. 
once that was done and I was happy with how it felt, I wiped off my sanding brush or dust and started painting. And for that, I am using Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in the color Lantern. This is by far one of my favorite colors by Sweet Pickens. I absolutely love this beautiful silky black. So for this project, I did add extra bond to my paint because I wanted it to stick to the piece. Now, when you're working with a piece that has kind of a slick finish to it, if you don't want all of your paint to chip back off or at least big portions of it, you definitely want to use extra bond. I did have to go over the entire piece with two good even coats, which was again, fine by me. Each coat took about 10 minutes, so it wasn't that big of a deal. The thing I like about this milk paint is it's nice and smooth. It's self-leveling uh, and it, it just has a really beautiful kind of eggshell finish once it's been uh, dried and sanded and then finished or sealed. Once it was dry, I took it outside and with my 220 grit sandpaper on my little rotary sander, I gave just the seat and the back a good sanding. I did hit a couple of the spots or a couple spots on the legs, but I didn't want to take off too much paint at one time. And the sander definitely tends to be a little aggressive. <laughs> so I went in once I was done sanding the parts with the um, electric sander and sanded the rest of it by hand just uh, to give it a good smooth finish and to do a little bit of distressing in many places. Once I was all done with the sanding portion, I took it back inside and wiped it down really well. I'm going to be putting transfers on this. And as I've said in previous videos, if you are going to put transfers on a piece before you seal it, you need to really make sure that you've gotten all of the sanding dust off of your piece first. So once my piece was clean and dry, it's time to play with transfers. And for this one, I'm going to be using the Painterly Florals Transfer Set by IOD. I absolutely love these sunflowers and this lavender is gorgeous as well. So here you can see I'm just kind of playing with my setup, trying to figure out where I want everything. And then I start by putting my bottom layer down, which are these two leaves, and then just kind of working my way from there. So anything that you want in the background, you want to put down first. And then you can see here, I'm just rubbing that transfer down with the transfer stick and peeling that vellum slowly but surely back. And then you just kind of work your way up from there. So your bottom layer goes down first and then you put your next layer on and then you can even layer more on top of that if you want. It really doesn't matter. You just keep playing with it until you create the look that you're going for.
Once the transfers were finally down where I wanted them and burnished in really well, it's time to seal my paint and for that I'm using Sweet Pickens Oil Wax in black. I'm just using a chip brush to give one good even thin coat to the entire piece and then let it sit for about 15 to 20 minutes before I come back with a shop towel and wipe back the excess. Now just a reminder, I carry Sweet Pickens Milk Paint products and DIY paint products here in my cottage and also on my website at www.TheEclecticCottageSpokane.com. Now I did go over this entire piece a couple of times just to make sure I got all of the excess oil wax off of it. And I have to say, I am absolutely in love with how this little chair turned out. my projects for today's video. I hope you liked them. Uh, what did you think of the chair? I absolutely love how that thing came out. Uh, for whatever reason, those sunflowers on that black paint just make me happy. <laughs> so definitely my favorite of the four projects for today. Uh, if you did like the video, I would really love it if you would give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, again, if you haven't already, I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel. Just a small reminder, any of the DIY or Sweet Pickens paint products can be purchased through me on my website at www.TheEclecticCottageSpokane.com and it's down in the description below as well. And for Tuesday's video, we were able to reschedule our trip over to the west side to pick up plants and do a little thrifting. So I'm hoping it's going to be a little bit of a mix of a thrift haul and get to show you some of the awesome tropical plants that I am bringing home to put here in the cottage. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then I've got a bunch of things in the work for works for Friday's video as well. So I hope you'll join me for those. Have a great weekend and I will see you back here on Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.